Good day everyone, welcome to ITS 306. This is Web Development 2. This is for sections A and B. My name is Julius, your instructor. Today we're going to have another pre-recorded class in continuation to our discussion about user interface design. We'll be working on the second part of our formatting lesson, formatting using CSS. Now if you have remembered, if you can remember, um, in our previous lesson, we were working on the navigation as well as the banner of our website and for this week we will continue working on the rest or we'll continue working um, on the formatting of the entire website so if you have any questions or clarifications make sure to share it with the class go ahead please go ahead and comment your questions down to our Facebook group post or you can send in your questions to our respective Facebook chat groups and uh, just, a rem uh, just a reminder be sure to watch the entire video, listen, and understand the lessons attentively. Right after this class, there will be learning assessment and assignment that will be posted. Now, if you can remember, this is just going to be a recap. These are the steps on, or our steps in designing the website's user interface. So first is we'll be working on the front-end markup, and then the front-end formatting. Okay? Now, we've already discussed or we've already worked on the first part. Again, today, we'll be working on the second part or we'll be working on formatting for the entire website. And then, after that, we'll be adding responsiveness and we'll be adding JavaScripts or the scripts that will make our website a little, uh, that will give our website a little more dynamics. As for adding responsiveness, it is enabling our website to completely adapt to different screen sizes and resolution. And then, of course, once we've all designed our website, we will be we will start working on adding functionalities that will be using PHP programming language as well as MySQL database management. All right. So if you can remember, here's where we left off. With our previous lesson so we were working on our navigation as you can see something or it, it looks a little more like a website now at the top part we, we we were also working on the banner well of course you can all you can always design it um according to what you want or how would you like to design it but this is what we've um, gone through so far and today we'll be working for the entire or for the rest of the website so maybe as you have as you can as you have probably learned by now obviously this is the home page of our website the home page serves as the summary of all the contents that can be found inside the website so in this in this case this is a some sort of a portfolio website and that includes the blog projects and about me or about the author okay so obviously all the contents the blog the projects and the contact information are about the author will be included inside the home page all right so again the home page serves as the collection of all the contents that can be found or collection or summary of all the contents that can be found inside the website so obviously since the contents in this case in this the, our content will be include blogs projects and about the author then the, this homepage should include the summary of the contents that can be found in this um, links or these web pages. All right. So, okay. So th that's why we will have here the blogs, the, the blog content rather, then the project, and then about. So as for the about section, it will be included on, on our footer. Okay. So we will turn this to something like this, okay? All right. So this may not be all the blogs that can be found on the website, but again, this is just summary. So we're going to introduce a few of the, for example, if you will be having hundreds of blogs, we will only include at least four, right? The latest four blogs that you've added to your website. So that is the functionality or that, that is the function of a homepage. Okay, so since we'll be working on, um, since we'll be working on making the contents or summarizing all the content inside a website, 
we are going to, I am going to introduce to you one of the elements of a functional website or a good or one important content or element for a good website. And that is what you call website cards. Okay, so a card is a small rectangle associated to a singular thought or content. Cards are full of interactive elements such as text, links, buttons, or images, but they suggest just one main action. The one of clicking through the card to further discover the content. Okay, so that is what you call card. So this is an example of a card here. So for example, this is a blog about a certain content. So we will include a picture, the title, and then the dis a short description about the blog content, and then an option that will lead the user um, discover more about the content itself. So let's say, for example, here, again, this is just a summary. So if we're going to click this, it will route us directly to the actual page that contains the um, the blog itself or the, in the entire content of the blog okay so that so this is an example of a card and it's a very good way it's a very good way in creating you know in summarizing the contents of the entire project after all this is what homepage is all about okay so he, the these contents the blogs the projects we will turn this into cards okay that's why i've already added photos title of the blog and then the a short description regarding the blog and then read more this will allow the user to be able to read the entire content right? okay so without further ado let's get started let's open up our our source code and let's proceed hold on okay all right so the first thing that we're going to do is again we are going to turn this the first content can into a card so how do we do that let's open up our ship our notebook plus plus and then let's check our index our html file let's try to find us another one so we have main all right here okay so we have here all projects can I? that is the title or it should be blog hold on Dada. it is under the main section and then the first one that we'll be working on would be the title can I? okay let us first format or design the title okay and we'll try to make it look something like this okay so to do that Hold on. Okay, so first is we are going, again, we're going to design the old blogs, which is the title or the section heading. So let us give this a selector, <coughs> excuse me, and let's use the class selector and let's call it perhaps section heading. All right, and that way we'll be able to call this particular H2 and then design it and format it using our style.css file. So again, since this is a class, so how do we call it using CSS? We will use dot 
and then the class name which is section heading all right so again just a recap if you're using class we will use dot and if it's an id then we will use hash all right okay so first is we're going to set the font size to let's say 32 pixel and then the font family to uh, let's say roboto condense or if roboto condense is not available in the in the computer or in the browser we will use any sans serif font okay that is the purpose of using font family and then we will set the border left to about um, three pixel solid and then the color uh, this be 4c20 what it does is it will give us a border on the left side which is three pixel and this particular color let's save that and let's take a look first oh hold on let me save this Let me save that real quick. Let's save that. Reload. Here. So we have a little border here. Can I orange? And then all blocks. Alright, let's proceed. And then we will add another border to the right. Same thing. Uh, it's 3px solid and then the same color be4 hold on e4c20 and then let's set a padding for about 4px top and bottom and then 32px right and left again whenever we set um, measurement for padding margins and if we're going to include or if we're going to input two values then the first one would be top and bottom the second would be right and left if you can remember and then we will set the color to let's say two four three three four three all right let's save that let's take a look okay all right for some reason okay so we've got it going on. So we have here the right, um, the left side and the right side. So we are going to set, uh, we're going to, can I, since the border on the right side is just too far, now it's just pinaka edge, we're going to change that. We are going to set it to, we're going to set the display to inline block. Let's save that okay here okay what inline block does is okay what these value or what these property the css display inline um, does is here let's take a look this is from w3schools.com so compared to display inline the major difference is that display inline block allows to set a width and height on the element so basically what it does is we are setting the the border we set the border instead of adapting it to, to the entire screen we are adapting it to the element which it surrounds to diba? so let's go back for example kani, gaina, instead nga ang border is ac or adapting to the entire width of the screen once we change the display into inline block it will only adapt to the element which is the all block instead of the entire screen okay so that's it let's reload again all right okay next is we'll work on the cards
So we'll re we're already done with the um, the section heading, the title. Now let's work on the actual card. So the first thing that we're going to do is, if you can see here, the cards are um, enclosed under the section element. So we've already created a selector for or a class name for our um, the, our card. So we have here the division for our image, getting a picture, and then we have here the title, and then the description. So let's okay. So we have everything is inside a card yeah, um, division. So the first, thing, the next thing that we're going to do is hold on. Okay. Um, for us to be guided, let's let, let's just write here card a comment. This is for us to for us to be guided, di ba? Para makabalot ang this part. And below would be just about the card. Hold on. Okay. So first is we're going to set the section. Okay. Okay, let's set section and then display. Let's set the display to flex. If you can remember flex, diba? Uh, flex will allow you to change the orientation of the contents, diba? By default, the contents will be kani magpasunod siya from top to bottom. That is by default. Setting the display property to flex, it will give us the option or it will give the browser an option to change the orientation of the content instead of vertical it will it will now start um, arranging the contents horizontally that means from right or from left to right so that's what we want we want our contents to be oriented from left to right or sideways kumbaga. okay next is all right justify content and then space around and then flex wrap to wrap okay so as for the justify content let's open up hold on Okay, if you can remember, the the justify content will allow us to um, let's say set the set the direction of the contents. All right, so there are different properties. We have flex start, flex end, center, space between, space around, space evenly, and initial. So um, again, by default. It's gonna be flex start, so all the contents will be since this is flex, diba? If if you can remember, since the, we set the display to flex, then instead of the contents going down, the contents will now going to um going left to right. Then the justifying the content will just allow us to arrange whether the or arrange the spacing in between the um the spacing be in between the contents. So by default, flex start, the contents will be stacked together or close together at the top right corner of the element or of the of the screen. Flex end does this the opposite. So the contents are still um, next to each other, but the contents will now be at the um, right side. Okay, the center obviously they are the contents are still gonna be. Um, next to each other, but all the contents are grouped at the center, top center, and then space between the the what it does is 
it will automatically distributes the content with equal distance, diba? Right? So here, let, let's say if we have five um, visual elements, I'm sorry, five elements or five contents, then the, that those contents will be evenly distributed all the in, to the entire screen, diba? Right? Space around, um, it will give the same exact space from um, to the contents in both left and right. So for example here, so let's say this is about 10 pixel. So we have 10 pixel here, we have 10 pixel here. That is for this content. And then for this content, we'll have 10 pixel here. And then we have 10 pixel here. Same with the rest of the content. Right? And then space evenly. Now it will automatically adjust to the uh, width of the entire screen and then add the add the space the amount of space that will make the content evenly distributed so for example if this is about 15 pixel then this is going to be 15, 15 pixel 15 and 15 and initial it's still going to a function just like flex start okay so we want our we want our content this time okay we want our content to be distributed oh um, hold on as space around that means it will automatically it will give us space on the both the left side and the right side of each content all right so let's save that okay let's save that Right, so that is for the entire section. Next is, all right, hold on. See that? All right, let's use the card. Or oh, I'm sorry, let's, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change or format the card division. So this division represents one card, okay? And then, Let's set the width to about, um, let's say, 45%. That means it will utilize 45% of the entire screen only. Okay. And then, all right, so the entire card would be 45% only, 45% uh, of the entire screen. Next is we're going to change the, or we're going to make sure that the card image or the picture itself the size of the picture will utilize the size of the division card, which is 45%. So how do we do that? We're just going to call the card and then image. I'm sorry. And then the image element. So again, the first thing that we called here is the division and then the image element itself. Let's set the width to 100%. All right, let's save that and let's try to take a look. Okay. All right. Okay, so next is we're just going to add some um, dynamics to it. So let's go back. So we want that whenever we hover to the picture, it will give us uh, some border as well as shadow. So to do that, let's go to, oh, let's type in card image and then colon for hover, All right? That means whenever we hover the, the card image division, this will happen. So we will add box shadow. zero ten px six px and then negative six px that is seven 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 color all right let's check that let's reload all right here okay so whenever we hover a box shadow will display all right so how do we write box shadow hold on all right so this is how you write the box shadow so we have here 
this is gonna be the syntax so we have back sh back shadow and then the horizontal offset vertical offset blur spread and color so going back to our going back to our code so the first number of the first digit or the first uh, value is gonna be the horizontal um, offset so since this is zero that means there will be no in this case there will be no shadow um, horizontally and then the ver vertically there will be 10 pixels of shadow six um, will be the amount of blur six pixels and negative six for the spread and the color okay again we have horizontal vertical the amount of blur and the amount of spread and then the color okay so let's save that and let's check it again okay here so as you have noticed there there are no blur or there are no shadow um horizontally i'm sorry vertically what we only have is the horizontal all right and then it's got six percent um i'm sorry six pixel blurriness and then the spread is negative six all right okay and then the color right that is the card or the box shadow all right so let's continue let's add let's say card and then the card description let's set the padding to 0 and 8 px all right that's it okay so that is for the blogs and the blogs and the project so notice that everything has been automatically um we are just using one css or one yeah we only called the section and the card but it affects to all of the um all of the contents for both the blogs and the project it's because of how we write it inside our css or I'm sorry, html file all right so next let's work on our uh, footer so let me open it up real quick all right let's let me just add a comment here that says footer okay the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to call the footer element all right and then let's set the background color to this two four three three four three and then padding is 8px and then color is that one and then display is flex again setting up the display to flex will let our browser know that the element should be aligned vertically or horizontally rather here okay all right next is we'll be working on the links so we will call again footer and then a let's set all the links color to uh, white all right let's use the hexadecimal just to be formal okay all right okay next is hold on okay let's work on the left footer okay our if if you have noticed our footer is divided into different two different um areas we have here the left and then the right so let, for, for now let's work on the left side 
So the left division is called left footer using ID. So obviously we will call footer again and then hash hash since we are using ID and then left footer. We'll set the flex to one. That means it should be one um one column only. And then let's set the border right to let's add one pixel and then solid and then it's color red okay we're just adding a border that separates from the color or the left side footer and the right side footer and then let's add padding left uh 32 pixels all right let's check let's reload here okay so we have here the div uh, we've already div divided the two um, columns, I'm sorry, the two divisions of our footer. We have here the left and the right. Let's continue. Okay, so let's, in the meantime, let's fix this because we we don't want to have this bullet for our um, list. So, okay, same thing. Left footer and then let's call the ul and then let's set the padding to zero and then list style all right and then line height 1.5 okay all right so it's looking better now Right, this time let's work on the right side so we'll call footer again and then hash right footer and then flex again so this is gonna be letting the browser know that this is the second column padding let's set it to zero um eight pixel and then the text align and let, let's put it to let's set it center okay all right and then this time hold on we're supposed to make it look like this all right it's okay this time we'll remove the dots and then let's set it to instead of aligning uh, vertically we're going to make this align vertically so to do that let's call the social media footer division so same thing um let's say footer and then social media footer and then ul right since so because we're using the unordered list. Let's set the display to flex. And then list style to none. And then justify content center. This is this will allow the browser to center everything inside this division. And then let's set the padding to zero. there okay all right how about let's increase the padding real quick about let's say 10. i oh, know it's okay we'll set that individually instead all right to do that footer let's call footer again and then social media footer ul and then li we're going to separate each of them Let's set the font size, or let's increase the size to 48 pixel. And then padding, let's give it 16 px distance. All right, it's much better. Uh, we're just going to do the same. All right, we're just going to copy, or whatever it is that we did on the old blocks, we're just going to do the same thing with the old projects. 
All right, we're just going to copy whatever it is that is inside the section heading. We're just going to copy it for all projects. So that means we're just going to call or we're just going to add the class name for H2. So we will add class and then section heading. Save and then let's reload here. Okay. All right. And then lastly, we're going to add a little bit of dynamics for our read more um, button. So to do that, let's hold on. Let's write it somewhere in here. Okay, here. All right, so I first is we'll go, we're going to call each button we're going to set it with a specific selector so as another read more okay ahref let's call it um um btn button that read more okay and then just like that we will call it btn read more and then let's set the padding first to about 8 px by 24 px and then the border same thing 3 px solid and then the color should be this b e4 c20 and then Let's set the transition period to about 0 0.4 seconds. That means whenever you hover it, it will the changes will take effect within 0 0.4 seconds. It's not um, it's not instant. Let's set the display to inline block. And then let's set the margin bottom to about let's say hmm, 24 px and then same thing with the left 24 px and then font weight let's increase the font weight in other words the boldness of the color let's just add the bold and then the background let's set it to color um the background color Let's set it to white. All right, let's check it out. Hold on. Let's let's save it. Let's just all blogs. Okay, here. All right, so for us to do the same thing for all of the re read more buttons, we're just going to call everything, um, every read, uh, every button this. Sanaron. Uh, okay, we're just going to copy the same class name for all the read more button, read more button, rather. Okay. Okay. All right. I think we got it. Okay. Now we we just one last thing. We're just going to make a change whenever you hover. So to do that, let's add hover. So same thing. Dot btn. Read more and then semicolon. Oh, uh, colon rather and then hover. Let's set the background. Whenever you hover it, it will change the background to something else. Let's say. CC734B. I'm sorry. Numla. Again, CC734B. For some reason, my keyboard is not really looking. It's not working well. Hold on. Voila. Okay. Numla. Okay. All right. CC734B. 
and then text decoration let's remove the underline let's set it to none and then padding 8px 64px 8px 24px so basically the general idea is that it will increase its size whenever we hover the link or the button all right okay so that's it for today's lesson i hope you guys under um learned something from today i know it, maybe it's a little bit longer than usual but oh, i hope again you've learned something and then here's what you're going to do you go um with your progress uh, we're just going to check the progress on your work uh, you're going to do the same uh, you don't necessarily have to copy the entire thing but i encourage you to do so or well i will allow you to copy all everything that i just did but I encourage you to design it on your own okay to make it you know personal and then submit your work through our google classroom i will be uploading a new classwork anytime today okay all right, so next is we are going to learn how to add responsiveness to our website. When you say responsiveness, it will allow us to change the, our, our website is capable of adapting to different sizes and screen sizes and resolution. As of the moment, it will not, not perfectly. As you can see, magubang. But okay lang siya, but we want, no, now some, there are some parts that can maguba, diba? if atong edit decrease and size. And um, anyway, in our next meeting, we'll learn how to do this like that. Okay, let's say if compare nato ni kanay atong finish product. Alright, kanay mo display siya if the screen size detected is for mobile phone. Mo appear ni siya. That's gonna be the next lesson that will be discussed. Alright, so thank you so much for making this part of the video. Uh, please keep yourself safe and God bless as all. Well.